Hey, what's up everybody? For those of you who are new to this channel, I try to talk in depth about space transportation, especially all the ways that regular people like me could go to space someday. And my question for today is this, is the space station still growing? And are there going to be new space stations in the next couple of years? That's what I'm going to try to answer today. Welcome to Epic Future Space for July 13th, 2016. So the International Space Station has recently grown thanks to a company named Bigelow Aerospace. And Bigelow has been working for many years on expandable space habitat technology. And I wanted to go in detail about their history and all the different modules that they've worked on up until this point, but I think I'm going to save that for another video, maybe my first installment of Throwback Thursdays, giving uh, histories on different companies and uh, spaceflight programs. So I'm going to save that for a little bit later. Once I do have that ready, I'm sure I'll have a link where you can click on the back history for Bigelow Aerospace and how we got to this position where Bigelow Aerospace is expanding the International Space Station. So that's what I want to get to today is what that module is, which is the BEAM module. The Bigelow Expandable Activity Module, or BEAM, was launched into space on April 8th and arrived at the space station on April 10th and attached to its berthing port on April 16th and since then it has successfully been expanded and pressurized. The manual expansion operations began on Thursday, May 26th, which saw astronaut Jeff Williams operating the controls to pump air into the beam, carefully following instructions from Mission Control in Houston. But the structure did not grow as predicted when air began flowing into it. NASA had to hold off trying to expand the module further after receiving a set of no-go conditions and not seeing any noticeable movement. NASA tried again on Saturday, May 28th and got better results this time and the beam expanded to its intended size and the internal volume was pressurized to the same level as the rest of the station. Astronaut Jeff Williams opened the hatch and entered the module on June 6th and installed several of the sensors that will be used for its two-year mission at the station. Some of the capabilities that BEAM will be testing over the next two years will include radiation protection, thermal, structural, and mechanical durability, long-term leak performance to see if any air leaks out of it or if the pressure starts to go down over time, and of course the whole operations of being able to expand a module successfully and that's already been demonstrated. This is all part of a much larger plan that Bigelow Aerospace has to build, manufacture, and launch their B-330 modules into space and arrange them in hopefully many different configurations in low Earth orbit for some serious customers to rent and lease for many different purposes. Mostly government agencies from a few nations are officially their future tenants at this point, but hopefully several companies will officially become customers soon, especially now, and a collaboration collaboration between Bigelow and their human transportation partners, SpaceX and Boeing, can begin for real. So now that the BEAM module has been deployed successfully and is already underway in its two-year test program, this opens up a lot of possibilities and an idea that Robert Bigelow, the CEO and founder of Bigelow Aerospace has, might actually be taken seriously and implemented by NASA. And no, unfortunately, the proposal is not to send these expandable modules to the moon, at least not yet anyway. The proposal that Bigelow is trying to push really hard right now is called X-Base, which would expand the International Space Station even further with one of their B-330 modules. X-Base was announced when Robert Bigelow and United Launch Alliance announced that they would be officially teaming up, with United Launch Alliance being the launch provider and Bigelow being a part of their future Cislunar 1000 architecture. The idea is to attach a B-330 to one of the available ports at the station, and since the B-330 has two docking ports itself, there would still be an available port for visiting spacecraft. The addition of a B-330 module attached to the International Space Station would increase the station's internal volume by 30%, supporting NASA's activities and hopefully commercial activities as well. Bigelow hopes that if this plan is implemented, NASA would be the primary customer, but would also hope that they would allow for some sort of time-sharing circumstance to be allowed so that commercial companies could use space for experiments and whatever other purposes they might want to use it for. Including a B-330 module could also extend the lifespan of the International Space Station, past 
the 2024 date. However, once the space station does become decommissioned, they could detach this B-330 module and either have it be an independent flyer or attach it to any other existing space stations that have a compatible docking port. So that could be very cool and very beneficial to all parties involved. But Bigelow is just one plan, and it's still a proposal at this point. But there is an official plan to expand the space station even further, and that has to do with the Russian segment. However, I don't want to get into too much details right now. I think I'm going to end this video here, and next week we're going to be talking about those future Russian modules that will be sent up to the International Space Station, and how those modules might serve as the core for a new Russian space station. And of course, we can't go uh, talking about space stations without the Chinese aspect to all of this. So that's what we're going to be talking about next time. Thank you very much for watching this video. My name is Michael Clark, and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And please, let me know what you think about this. Do you think that this is a good idea that Bigelow Aerospace has? And do you think that NASA would be more likely to accept their proposal now that things are looking pretty good with the beam module? Let me know in the comment section below. Also, I'm now on Patreon, and there's a bunch of things I want to be able to do with this channel, mainly being able to go to space conferences and collecting some really great interviews. But I also want to bring in more people so that we can produce even more content and just spread even more enthusiasm for space. So if you would like to help out this show, please visit patreon.com slash epicfuturespace. Every single penny helps. And since my last video, there's so many new patrons. So I want to thank all of you guys so much for this. I just am so amazed at your generosity. We have three new bronze patrons, Jarrett Jensen, Sarah Hill, and Kurtz Mays, who are all donating $1 or more per month to support this show. And thank you to Paul Mount and Tim Dorsmagen for your continued support. For our silver patrons, we have two new patrons, Patrick Becker and Colin Campbell, who are donating $2.50 or more every month. And thank you very much to Steve M, Clifford Trotter, and Ocean McIntyre for your continued support as well. Now in my last video, we only had one gold patron, and I am so shocked. We have so many new gold patrons now. Big thank you, of course, to Captain James Harkness for your continued support, and welcome and thank you very much to Nico, Jeff B, Dustin, and Philip for your guys' support. They are donating $5 or more every month to support this show, and just, like I said, I am so amazed at your guys' generosity. Thank you so much. So again, thank you very much, and thank you for watching this video. Next time, we're going to be continuing this conversation about the expansion of the International Space Station. But until the next time I see you guys, keep moving onwards and upwards, and don't forget, Ad Astra to the stars.